Welcome back, Ultimate fans, to Ulti World's live coverage of the high school national invite. Coming to you live from Rockford, Illinois, at the Mercy Health Sports Corps 2 complex. Brought to you by Universe Point Cleats. We're proud to present our coverage of the tournament. I'm Keith Rayner, joined in the booth by the venerable Charlie Eisenhood. And we have a girls' division final getting ready to tip off between Nathan Hale out of Seattle and High Country, a homeschool group out of the Triangle area in North Carolina. Both of these teams have are two of the top seeds at the tournament and have been extremely successful in, in most of their games. Had a couple bumps and bruises there, but certainly no losses and a few challenges along the way. Yeah, it's it's been pretty smooth sailing for this High Country team. They have played close first halves at times, but consistently pulled away. Nathan Hale, on the other hand, did have a close game against Nikua Valley yesterday, winning that game on double game point, but has looked great here this morning in the championship bracket. They're a deeper team than High Country, no doubt. And the real question is, how are the top players on these two teams going to match up? Alyssa Earhart for High Country, so impressive all weekend long. And going to be fun to watch these two teams duke it out. High Country, the North Carolina State champions. Nathan Hale, one of the top teams in Seattle. They made it to the semifinals of the Washington State Tournament. And I think the fact that they have come here to the final is just another indicator that the Seattle youth programs are incredibly strong. I mean, this Nathan Hale team is probably the third or arguably fourth best team out of Seattle, and yet here they are in the final of the national invite. Well, I, I, at this point, I think many people would say that these two teams are, are hailing from the premier youth girls communities in, Un, in the country right Unquestionably. I, I, there, there is no question. Seattle has long been one of the hotbeds or the hotbed, but... There's a case to be made for North Carolina having caught up at this point. We've seen really strong play from their YCC teams. We're starting to see that they can match Seattle's top-end talent and uh, the, the pipeline of those youth players into the area colleges I think is going to start to shift the college scene maybe more towards those Atlantic Coast teams and away from the Northwest teams that have so historically dominated. Really looking forward to... Like you mentioned, seeing some of these top-end players match up, some of the best players at this tournament from an individual standpoint are going to be facing off in this game. We'll see how the matchups go as Hale in the white pulling, going from right to left to high country in the black to get us started. Alyssa Earhart picks it up. And an early block for Hale. Nice job there by Sienna Patton. Well, we've seen this high country team turn the disc over quite a bit on offense, but they always seem to be able to get it back and get those holds. We'll see what they can do against this experienced and talented Nathan Hale team. Yeah, it's, it, I mentioned in, in our coverage of, of the tournament, but not an efficient team, high country. They just will outwork you and then rely on some of their athletes to take advantage when the opportunity presents itself. But Hale now with the opportunity as they near the red zone. Disc over to Ali Constantino, one of the stars of this Hale team. And the throw back to her is beyond her grasp. Now a deep shot and tracked down by Carice Berry. And now back into the hands of Alyssa Earhart. Earhart looking again to the end zone for Berry. And Carice hauls that in for a hold for high country. It's one nothing. So there you go. I mean, that's, that's high country homeschool or ultimate right there. Give it up. Play good defense to get it back. And then have a much more efficient possession after that. And we see early Alyssa Earhart showing off her skills as she shoots to the end zone and drops in an easy score.
Carice Berry, one of the athletes on this high country team that's tasked with getting on the receiving end of, of these Earhart throws. And her older sister, Margaret Berry, has been one of the premier players at this tournament. I believe there are three Berry sisters on the team. Two, two sisters and a cousin. Two sisters and a cousin. So uh, lots of berries. And as is common, I think, for, for these homeschool programs, a lot of family members on the team in the coaching staff. Melissa's dad, George, is the coach for this team. There's two Hanks sisters on the team. So Alyssa holding now, getting ready to pull. We'll get a look at Nathan Hale's offense. Ali Constantino centering the disc. And a drop early from Hale is going to give High Country their first break chance. Earhart and Barry going to work now. Earhart to Barry, to back to Earhart to a different Barry, and a quick break. Great start from the High Country D-line. Hale gives them a short field with the drop, and they waste no time. Hit the under into power position, and no defense in transition there from Hale, and it's an easy break. Earhart will be on that the upcoming U.S. national team for the under-20 world championships. It's a team that Constantino, well, one of the two Constantinos, Ali Constantino, has played with in the past. So, Hale... After getting the first break opportunity, now trailing by a break. And we mentioned it's been pretty smooth sailing for them for most of the tournament, but the toughest challenge they took on was Niqua Valley, who High Country beat in the semifinal. Nearly, that game came down to the wire, but Hale able to pull it out. High Country take, took care of business pretty much all weekend long. Including really dominating Niqua Valley in the semifinal uh, in the previous round. Allie takes the pull and then sends it over to Savon Hurt. And looks like there is a stoppage. Emma Constantino with the disc. Stands starting to fill up here as teams have mostly concluded their consolation play. Emma to Alley. Margaret Barry on the mark. Excited to see how this matchup plays out. Really flat mark from high country right now. Wide throw challenged by by Barry, but now Emma Constantino over to Alley. Lifts one over the mark. Oh, and just a, a, one of the most dangerous situations in Ultimate when a defender is coming to attack an upline throw and the offensive player has to look back at the disc. And you could see there, as she makes the catch, and she's essentially totally blindsided by the defender who really shouldn't have made that play. And, and this is the kind of situation that you hate to see because now you have a player injured in a situation where they had no anticipation of contact. And you just hope it's not a concussion or a serious injury, just maybe a little stunned or got the wind knocked out of her. 
Evan I mean, Constantino caught completely off guard by the defender and tough when you're not prepared at all for any impact. But she is coming up to her feet now, thankfully. Now it looks like she might stay on the field too. So maybe just had her bell rung. And she will stay out there. So that's good to see. Now looking for something up the open side, but comes backwards to hurt. It's been all hurt and the Constantino sisters for Hale on this possession. Sticking with the system here as they look for Emma Constantino and she goes over the top of her defender for an emphatic catch, but out of bounds. So it'll be just a pretty turnover and immediately Earhart attacking to Margaret Berry for the deep throw. Earhart to the end zone, but Carice not able to catch up to it. Oh, that was another great transition attack from high country, and Hale's lucky to get the disc back. Earhart's throw just a little ambitious, too much out in front of the receiver, but now it's going to be a full 70, and you're seeing better pace right now from high country than Hale. So Allie checking in, and her throw to Emma is too far out in front, so it's going to be a short field turnover for Hale, giving High Country a prime chance to take a 3-0 lead. Earhart around break to Alyssa Hankst. Earhart scanning for options and forced with the stall count rising, it just throws something into the end zone and it's blocked. Good heads up defense from Hale. Keeping eyes on the disc, head on a swivel. Constantino boosts it looking for Hurt. It's maybe tipped there by Earhart, but Hurt comes up with it. And that gets Hale back past midfield. Hurts throw high and intercepted by Carice. Earhart around break for Margaret. And a call stops play. Pick call in the stack. Shouldn't affect play here. Maybe I'm wrong. Not quite clear who was picked. Were there two defenders covering one player? Perhaps. Earhart checks it in and immediately takes a shot for the end zone, but it comes up short. Notably, our, our game here is to 15 in this final. The clock you see is the soft cap clock, as in championship USA Ultimate events, the soft cap will go on at the conclusion of that 90 minutes, and then there will be no hard cap, so teams will have to score to win. You can't get saved by the bell. Allie over to Emma, up the line, and that has really been the heart of the offense throughout this point as they give and go. But the cutters downfield are pretty stagnant, finally finding an option Marie Scott. Yeah, good defense from the cutter defenders from high country. They are just in the pockets of these Hale downfield players, and there Alyssa Hankst interrupts the Constantino connection, gets the disc back to high country. Yeah, we talked about how the high country offense can be inefficient, and we've even seen that on this point, but I think we haven't talked enough about how good their defense is. That's why they've been able to get away with the inefficiency because they just keep getting it back. Earhart giving it going for about 15 yards and now in the hands of Margaret. Nice grab by Carice. Yeah. 
Stack starting to, to spread out a bit, but Earhart's ability to be available for a reset is smoothed out a lot of the problems as she goes into the end zone. And it's another goal from Earhart to Carice Berry. Well, it looked like Hale had that goal down at the other end, but the catch from Constantino was out of bounds, and High Country eventually grinds it out, gets another break, and they're all over Hale here early in this girls' final. It was a 3-0 lead. I mean, that point was uh, a microcosm of what the weekend has looked like for High Country. Even when they're inefficient, when they take difficult shots, even though they play with a very small roster, rely on a, a central core of players, those players are in such great shape and have an ability to apply such defensive pressure that eventually they just wear teams down, which is remarkable for a team of maybe 13. They have a couple of middle school players on the team traveling with them, so not a deep group, but have been incredibly productive. Hale taking a timeout. This has got to be... If you, if you mapped all of the scenarios in Ultimate, all the score scenarios in which there were timeouts taken, 3-0 with the trailing team taking a timeout has got to be number one. I think this is the, the, the classic timeout. Stop the momentum. Talk about what you need to do. Try to get some mid-first half adjustments and come out and get a hold. Yeah, the, if – Get, kind of resetting after that first game to three, if you will, regardless of whether or not you use that philosophy, is pretty common. Uh, try and take back the momentum a bit, make some adjustments. You need a couple points to figure out what adjustments you need to make. But Hale probably trying to figure out how to free up some, some of their cutters downfield and how to stop the fast break attack from high country. I wonder if we'll see Hale potentially put one of their top handlers downfield and let them operate as a cutter to try to get some flow going because they've had a lot of difficulty with connecting their cutters to their handlers. It's been almost entirely strike cuts and handler motion to move the disc, and it's not a sustainable way to run your offense. We're at the Sports Score 2 complex here in Rockford, Illinois, the home of the 2018 Division Three College Championships and the 2016 national championships in the club division. We spent a lot more time in Rockford, Illinois than I would have anticipated. <laughs> I'll, I'll say and that perhaps much. would have liked, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's been, it's really, there's a reason that there are a lot of championship events held here. It's and a great complex. Absolutely. Sports score two is, is the gem of, of Rockford. You know, we've, we've been worried about lightning today. We've luckily avoided it so far, but even if we were to have lightning suddenly roll in and dominate the rest of the day, we could just go inside and play on their fabulous indoor turf field that is expansive. You can basically put two full ultimate fields side by side. So the pole going up and now disc centered to Patel Helmerium. Hale offense changing shape a bit from the horizontal stack they were running previously. And like you mentioned, pushing some personnel around. But that throw a little too wide. So they're going to give it back to Alyssa Earhart and High Country. Uh, just an execution mistake there. It was wide open cutter and fairly simple up the line throw. Just too much juice. And now High Country with a chance to really take control with another break. Carice Berry up to her older sister, Margaret. Now Alyssa Earhart, backhand force from Hurt. And Earhart gets it out into the middle. Alyssa Hankst underneath. And basically you're seeing 
the three top players on each team, three or four, matched up with the three or four best players on the other team, which makes for some exciting matchups and sometimes some difficult play as Earhart with another turnover. Constantino up to Helmerium, and Helmerium putting one out in front of Eva Constantino. She tracks it down about eight yards outside the end zone. Now looking for a reset and drops it off to Alley. Emma's around options denied, so she's going to go back to Alley. And a stoppage in play. And once again, High Country's defense shutting down any kind of quick attack score and forcing a turnover as Ali Constantino's inside forehand misses the mark. Well, there's just really no separation on the open side for Hale, and it's forcing these throwers to get creative. And while they have really skilled throwers, closing those windows and making them take more difficult options is almost always going to reduce your opponent's efficiency. So second chance for High Country on this point as they hunt a break. Margaret underneath. Melissa Hanks over to Earhart, and Earhart's going to pump a backhand deep. It's a bit of a hanger, and Ali Constantino takes the elevator up for that one. That's the way to make up for a turnover. Go sky a pile. Helmerium wide open downfield, so she's going to collect it about nine yards out. A blind cut nearing the score. Kayla Rehe. And high release backhand on the break side. And Hale Merriam gets it. Hale's on the board, 3-1. Well, it may have been a scary hold, but it's a hold. And that's what you want coming out of a timeout after giving up three straight. Get your defense back on the field. See if you can turn the momentum of the game. Nothing special here. Just the high release backhand out into some open space. And that's a much easier throw to complete than that inside forehand we saw from Ali Constantino, which has a much smaller room for error. And nice to see, I'm just spying down in the audience, the Donovans, the parents of Kelly Donovan, uh, after whom the trophy, the award that's given out to the top players in the Division Three college are handed out and the Donovans were here for the award ceremony at the Division Three Championships a couple of weeks ago. And they're coming out. They live here in Rockford. They're coming out to watch some high school championship ultimate today. Ali Constantino from this Hale team headed to Puget Sound next year. So she uh, will soon probably be in the running and in the conversation as a, as a potential Donovan Award winner given her talent. Yeah, I think in a, in a couple years you're absolutely right. And that Puget Sound team is going to be very dangerous. We were talking earlier this weekend, Keith. We think that after Bates wins the title next year, thanks to the strong play from Josie Galetta, we saw almost get there this year. It looks like Puget Sound may be the class of Division Three going forward. Yeah, already with uh, Rookie of the Year, award winner on the team and another one of the top rookies coming in and had some big impact freshmen this year in addition to uh, Emma Peoria, the rookie of the year in the women's division for D3. So you see how that, that the Northwest women's pipeline we talked about, how impactful it can be affecting basically every level of Women's and Girls Ultimate. So zone look here from Hale, looking to mix things up. Some, no, it, uh, maybe, it, yeah, it does look like there's junk. It's junk. They've got a they've got a clogger in the lane, taking away undercuts. 
And they've identified what this high country team wants to do, which is get those big sweeping unders. Earhart, high country staying on the open side right now. Not able to get across the field. Hannah Hanks told in the disc. And there's so much room in the break side space and the hammer space. But Nathan Hale challenging the handlers for this high country team to throw that. Earhart gets it all the way across the field and opens things up. Now fires one through the middle to Carice. Carice back to Margaret. Earhart scans the field calmly. Hannah Hanks back to Earhart and now back to Margaret Berry. So Hale staying in the zone even as they approach the red zone. He's trying to make the options difficult. And Hannah Hanks just lifts one over the cup. Barry tries to jump it in, but is unsuccessful. And forced to lose some yards back to Earhart for the reset. Barry over to Carice. And Carice or excuse me, Carice now catching the goal from Alyssa Hangst. So Carice Barry now all four of the high country goals as they go up 4-1. And very, very solid offense. They were unfazed by the poacher. They stopped trying to run the big unders out of the stack. Instead, initiated more from the handler set. And that let them chew up yardage on those short strike cuts. And then we saw some probing throws from Earhart, firing a couple forehands through the defense and opening up some space. And then patient red zone offense. Pretty much how you want to do it. Well, that point feels like one of those win-win points where both teams come off the sideline celebrating. I think Hale's going to be happy that they took away the deep options for High Country, slowed them down, and High Country had to take some pretty difficult throws, high stall resets. But High Country's going to say, hey, they threw a zone at us, and we worked it, and we took our time and found the option we wanted and got a hold. Yeah, and to, to beat the zone the first time you see it gives you confidence for seeing it later. But you're right. I, you know, obviously they took away the first option, and that's what the defense is trying to do. And I'm sure we'll see that zone again or variants of that junk as they try to take away that open side space. Because we did not see any over-the-top throws or any significant break side throws from high country. And if, if they can't prove to hit those, it could become tough sledding if Nathan Hale continues to overload the strong side. So the high country defense planning now. Already have gotten a couple of breaks to take this 4-1 lead. They have not given up very many leads at all at the high school national invite this year. So Earhart's pull, caught by Constantino, centered to Constantino, and back to Constantino, and back to Constantino. <laughs> Having Ali, a little fun here. Ali and Emma working it back and forth. Marie Scott, over to Emma. And again, more of a horizontal look from Hale, giving these handlers some room to attack and gain yardage. Now Hurt takes the reset. But there's just maybe too little mo downfield motion from Hales, but now starting to get things moving. Rosie Port, hand blocked by Earhart. Gets it right back for high country. Deep shot from Margaret Berry and skied. Emma Constantino going up to get that. That's probably the loudest we've heard the crowd so far on the impressive sky.
court. Resetting back to Emma. And challenged by Carice Berry, but Scott able to bring that in. And now to the end zone from Ali Constantino. And brought in, in time. Nicely done for the hold. Nora Pugh on the goal. Very clean look from Ali Constantino. Surveys the field, steps in, throws a confident forehand out to the space. And let's take another look at the block that got them the disc back. Huck goes up, one-on-one -on -one coverage, and just no question about it with the takeaway. Yeah, Emma Constantino going up with some with some force. And that's uh, that's a uh, manifestation of, of the phrase attack the disc. So Hale now, back within two, trying to get that first break. Have been able to get some turnovers, but not quite getting the offense rolling after they do gain possession. And we see Coach Amanda Kostic talking her defense through what they'll be trying to do this point to slow down high country. Our coverage today is presented by Universe Point. They're a new cleat company making cleats specifically designed for ultimate players from the ground up. And they've had players trying on cleats here this weekend. And from everything I've heard, very, very comfortable and a cleat pattern that is designed for cutting in ultimate, which is not something that you can really get from the mass manufactured cleats for other sports. Absolutely, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to trying a pair myself. Uh, we've long had to settle primarily for figuring out which sport you think is the best suited for you, uh, whether you like soccer or football, lacrosse. Uh, but we play ultimate. Want some ultimate cleats, and and as someone who owned a pair of Gaia cleats, which probably were the first ever manufactured specifically for ultimate, uh, I'm thinking we probably came a long way since then. And with all due respect to Gaia, those cleats were terrible, <laughs> and Universe Point though has has really taken their time to make good cleats, and you can check them out universepoint.com. So another change in defense here looks like a box in one, perhaps from Hale trying to take away touches from Alyssa Earhart. And while it is succeeding in that, it is not preventing High Country from advancing down the field as Margaret Berry into the end zone. Who else but Carice Berry for the score? Five straight <laughs> goals for Carice Berry. She's putting on a show here early and just creating separation all over the field. I mean, unstoppable. Not, not only is she finding room, but very secure hands. Margaret Berry has been pretty dominant at, at this tournament, but it's Carice putting on the show in the final. So if, if they're out there some listening to this, there's some proud Berry parents. So Hale mix, mixes it up, but can't can't get the turnover. Not a bad idea, though. I mean, I think taking touches away from Alyssa Earhart is probably a recipe for success, but High Country showing that they could do it without her. Well, and we've seen, especially the last couple points, clean offense. They haven't given up the disc. And given the defensive pressure they've been able to apply, that's going to make it a, a, a tough road for Nathan Hale. High country just looking better and better. So Hale trailing by three. Coming out on offense as we see high country break the huddle. That's 
many of the same faces taking the line for high country, but that's uh, kind of what you get with 13 or so. Earhart. She and probably five other players on this line for high country have played every point so far. Hail Merriam takes the centering pass. And a lot of cutter action to get things started for Hale. So they find a cutter cutter continue. Alex Hassenkamp up ahead to Emma Constantino. Gets it right back. Hassenkamp running out of time and kind of just floats a backhand in a in a space hoping someone could get there and no yeah. one does. Stall nine and three quarters just trying to get it out of her hand. Didn't really throw that to anyone in particular. Margaret Berry goes up and gets it with two hands and now puts it out for Carice. And Carice makes the grab and one. Another heavy collision, but she's no worse for wear. Drops it off to Earhart. Earhart back corner and Margaret Berry rockets into the space to come down with a break and make it 6-2. So much speed on display, Margaret Berry. We see after the collision, just steadily getting up, hitting the reset, and then the forehand to the end zone. Looked like it might be a turnover out of the hand, but Margaret Berry too fast to let that disc hit turf. Six to two. Nathan Hale staring down a significant deficit. And High Country just looking like the more confident team right now on offense. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm got to gotta say I'm impressed with the fitness level of this High Country team. Uh, Coach George Earhart talked with us before the tournament about how the team grinds people down. I think he, I think he said, and, and this certainly is not a trend that's continued in this tournament, that they had been scored on to start every game this season, more or less. Uh, but it was in the second half that they would pull away from teams, tire them out, even though they had a small roster, because they were just in great shape and not afraid to grind in the cutting lanes. And they've brought that mentality here to Rockford and had a lot of success behind simply outworking teams and being the fresher team even after points in which there were multiple turnovers. You can see George Earhart out on the line with his defense. Another one of his daughters, Karen Earhart, who's helping out. She was a sophomore at Carlton, made a big impact this year. Watching her sister, Alyssa, make a big impact on this game. Already has tallied four assists, along with a block. Nice, emphatic hand block. And is getting ready to pull. She's doing a lot of heavy lifting for high country. Allie Constantino to get things started. You can see visually the disconnect between the handlers and the cutters. Constantino's deep throw heads over to the break side and is knocked away. And that's just a, that's a hopeful look. Uh, there, there's not really an open cutter. You're throwing into the defense. High Country gives it back with a drop, but Nathan Hale's offense is, is just not clicking at all against this High Country D. And now... A great throw to space from Constantino. Finds Hurt at the front cone. And a hold for Hale to make it 6-3. And that's a rare transition attack from Hale. They've generally not been able to get anything going in those transition scenarios. But High Country misses the defensive connection there. And it's an easy goal at that front left cone. And you hear the chorus go up from the Nathan Hill boys team and the fans here the Hale boys preparing to play in the boys division final and hoping they can cheer their counterparts on and potentially get the Nathan Hale sweep it's been a 
fantastic weekend here at the high school national invite. Just such an awesome celebration of high level spirited youth ultimate. And for most of these teams, a capstone on their season. Just so much positivity at this event as, as these youth teams celebrate their season. A lot of high fives, a lot of laughing and smiling and dancing on the sidelines. So much dancing. A lot of cheering, a lot of dancing, a lot of dancing. It's choreographed dances to various popular music. Lots of, lots of energy. De definitely a different energy than what you get at the club championships, for example. So Ali Constantino getting ready to pull. Hale still in search of that first break. Got some chances, but haven't been able to convert. But if they can get some more transition opportunities, you might see them. It's a bobbled catch there from Hannah Hanks. And Ali Constantino is playing last back right now. And now finding a mark. And they're into standard matchup. Air hard up ahead to Margaret. And there, Constantino, instead of playing last back, playing first back, poaching in the handler space. Well, she's trying to get a poach block, but it's given a couple of easy throws up because she's been sagging off of her mark. She is hunting, though, as Earhart takes the reset and then goes into the middle to Margaret. And now Earhart over to Carice, but a uh, call probably going to stop this and send it back. Nope. It looks like that is not the case. A hold for high country, and they're just one point away from taking half here in the final of the high school national invite. That's right, Keith. And again, game to 15. In 47 minutes, we will have a soft cap go on. There is no hard cap here in the final, so you've got to score to win. High Country not having much difficulty doing that so far, particularly Carice Berry. Yeah, and, and you know, we saw on that point, Margaret Berry, she didn't score, but she was being covered by Ali Constantino, who was poaching, and she did exactly the right thing. Constantino was poaching. She attacks open space, and with Constantino's back turned, gets easy resets, and that was really important to keep that possession alive. And, you know, that's the risky run if you're a Constantino. Yes, perhaps you can come up with a heads-up poach block, but this is an experienced, smart team, and they're not throwing in her direction. They're just hitting the open cutters. We continue to see Hale mix up the defensive looks in search of a break, and that perhaps another trick up their sleeve that they wanted to try, get one of your best athletes in a little bit of chaotic position. High country, however, weathers the storm. So Earhart ready to pull for high country. Alley fields the pull. And <laughs> Margaret Berry Nearly gets a block there, and here's Constantino. She and Patton have marched this Hail team to near mid midfield. But Constantino's throw blocked by Barry, and Barry's taking off. Margaret Barry catches it, has her sister in her sights, but the throw is just too far. And just was a little too quick on the throw. If she'd taken one more second to pump fake on that forehand side, Constantino was beat. And all she had to do was put it out more into the space, try to kind of laser it in there, and misses the target. But again, great transition attack from high country. They've been so effective in those situations. 
uh, just chewing up yardage and getting themselves into the red zone. Love to see the instincts there from Caris Berry. Get the block, just keep trucking towards the end zone, especially when you've got throwers behind you who can get it to you. Offense initiates and now back into the middle for Constantino who tracks it down. Well, yeah, they got into a power position on the sideline and, and then didn't have a continuation cut. And that's kind of been the, the struggle so far in the first half for Hale is just having that connectivity between their throwers and their cutters. Well, we haven't seen a lot of great deep opportunities for Hale, and here they put one up. But Constantino's throw is beyond the reach of her receivers, so it'll be high country disc, about six yards outside of their own end zone. So Earhart picks up with the deep vertical stack. Constantino still poaching from the back as Barry comes under. Earhart around forehand and look at the speed of Margaret Barry. This comes out of her hands as she flies through the air just missed what would have been one of the craziest plays of the weekend. Got a hand on it, but couldn't pull it down. And I have mean, nothing about Margaret Barry's body language says that she has played nearly every point for an entire tournament. But I mean, it's she has amazingly, it. they have the better energy. And there's a layout grab from Scott to save possession for Hale and keep this half going. Inside break. Brought in and now in back in the hands of Allie. She's looking deep, puts up the backhand. A pair of open targets. And now to the end zone, Hale holds. Another long grinding hold for Hale, but that Constantino Huck had enough distance on it with her teammates in a position to make the play. You can see that all three of those players in better position than the defenders. Good throw from Constantino out into space and then an easy score. So now seven to four, Hale still trying to get that first break. See if they can extend the half even further. And very close there for High Country. Got a couple of really good looks at it, but ultimately unsuccessful. And they'll get one more chance, at least one more chance, to figure out a defense that works. They've, they've, had a, they've tried a bunch of different things, and they haven't really found something that sticks, that's caused high country to really get bogged down or turn it over. And waiting for a mistake is not going to work against this team the way they're playing right now. Yeah, it doesn't look like Hale is intent on letting high country settle in against any given particular strategy, but High Country's ability to remain composed and maintain possession despite uh, constantly shifting defense against them has been one of the things that's carried them to this three goal lead in the final. So under the 40 minute mark now as Ali Constantino prepares the pull. So another new look from 3-3-1 three, three, 
zone. Traditional force one way cup. And there's a very deep receiver. And if they could get a huck with some power behind it, they could easily hit the open receiver. I, th I find it's less likely that they're going to get a huck from where they are now and more get a long throw to somebody who can then throw the continue well past the deep, especially if that long throw draws the deep even closer in. So here's where we see that continue up to Carice Berry, but she thinks wiser and puts it backwards. Well, I think the players, knowing their strengths, Carice Berry not feeling comfortable with that throw and just gets it back to a handler. Melissa Earhart getting it every other right now, and... High Country closing in on the score to take us to half. Basically no reset pressure and the handlers for High Country just cutting up that cup right now. But there's the mistake. Hannah Hanks just throwing into the middle of the field into traffic and Hale intercepts. Emma Cosentino's throw incomplete. So a the best chance in quite a while for Hale. Looking for a break. Ends up back with high country. Barry around the cup. Now has things moving up to Carice. Back to Margaret. Earhart's done an excellent job being incredibly reliable. And there's the poach from Constantino. She timed that perfectly and jumped in front of the cutter to take it away. Now a deep shot from Constantino looking for Hurt. Hurt's the first one there. Now Hurt back to Constantino. First break within sight for Hale. Up line to Emma. And Emma into the end zone for Hurt. And Hale breaks right when they need it to. Bring it back within 7-5. That's a huge break. Obviously, you get one closer, but you also keep high country from going into halftime up four. And that margin just feels like such a big difference. Great work. Ali Constantino starting to really demand the disc. And she gets the block then sets up this score. That high release backhand, a weapon for her. She's been very effective with a lot of her backhand throws. It's her favorite huck as well. She's been able to power it downfield with that. Wonder if we'll see high country try and prioritize keeping her off of her backhand. No, there is a timeout on the field. So now, Hale can sense that, you know, we finally got our break on the board. We've been able to get turns, but now we're able to attack after the turn. And again, this was another example of transition offense after the turn. Constantino able to intercept the pass. So now you have not only offense beginning before defense has transitioned, but you have the disc in the hands of your best thrower. And we see how that advantage just piled on over the course of the possession until Hale was able to get the break. Yeah, high country never really got set defensively. And that's just better pace. I mean, that's something that high country's had the advantage in all half. Just better attack, more speed. But that point and that break for Hale, they were able to match that and never let high country get set up into their defense. It may not seem intuitive, but you can see how your choice in defensive strategy can impact your offense's ability to execute. When we saw Hale coming out just in, in honest person offense matched up by high country, high country was able to, to stay in their pockets pretty much the whole point. But now in these transition opportunities created by his own defense, not only do you get to mess with the matchups a little bit, but you also get to put high country on the back foot. So 
we may see Hale continue to stay with these defensive looks of, of poaches and junks in order to help jumpstart the offense. Yeah, I mean, it's as simple as having defenders or having your defenders and then eventually offensive players be already in positions where they can make cuts rather than being down in the stack. Long time out. No, uh, no official timekeepers down in the field. No observers. So probably past the traditional ninety seconds, but we'll let the teams figure it out. I've seen a lot of that during the course of the tournament. I don't think I've seen a single team ask another team to hurry it up. <laughs> no. Although that's probably better done on the sidelines anyway. Let's see the flag in the back corner there waving a bit. Starting to see our first actual wind. Not much though. Just a light thrower's wind. Yeah, we haven't really had much wind all weekend. That has not stopped teams from employing quite a bit of zone, particularly in the girls' division, but across both divisions. Earhart over to Margaret Berry. And Same defense here from Hale, 3-3-1 three, three, with the cup up front. And a miscue from... Hanks is going to give the disc back to Hale with a chance to close the gap even further. And Constantino looking to push the pace. Sylvie Corwin back to Alley. Alley high release backhand towards the end zone. And misread by everyone except for the cutter behind the play so a nice job by Rosie Port to be in the right space at the right time and don't look now Charlie but it's a one point game well once again high release backhand this one sketchy but Port is there defender misses it and you'll take it it's a break and that's now a couple points in a row. We've seen some execution mistakes from high country. Not really any specific pressure from the zone. I mean, that was a pure drop. And on the earlier one, we saw just a, an overthrow over the head of a receiver. So we've seen high country play much better, but maybe feeling a little uncomfortable against the zone. Disc moving into the hands more of players who don't traditionally touch it in those situations. Yeah, and this is that... High country and efficiency we talked about. This is about of it coming up. And I think for teams playing against them, it's a lot about being able to capitalize on it. It's pretty pretty often you're going to get the disc from this high country team. But if you got to find a way to get through their defense and take advantage of that, and we really have not seen anybody do that in these two days of play. So it seemed like we were going to go to half with you know, 40, 45 minutes remaining, and now we're approaching the 30-minute mark. And Hale's been able to extend this first half. Stepping it up when they needed to most. Pull goes up from Alley. Earhart has that one knocked away maybe a little casual and in initiating play and I think she never saw the defender uh, just a straight poach and maybe her vision blocked by her mark and just threw it right to the defense and a hammer from Allie bleeds a little bit too early for her receiver uh, a, a, a lucky second chance here for high country and they're going to have to figure out working through this three-person cup. A wide open deep option, but Earhart, maybe too much traffic for her to get it there. Constantino's just staying underneath. She's willing to bait it. Now there's two cutters 20 yards deep 
or further beyond the deep deep. And Ali Constantino is just is just daring them to throw it. And the fact that they haven't throw it thrown it yet suggests that they don't feel comfortable putting up that huck. Earhart seems confident taking the conservative choice here, and she and Barry have been just chiseling through the teeth of the cup. Well, they are, they are moving the disc, but it basically hasn't left a five-yard radius from the disc. And they don't seem, they don't seem bothered by that. The defense hasn't really taken that chisel away, and it's a fairly easy throw to complete. Yeah, that's a potential adjustment for the Nathan Hale coaches. Start to put some pressure on that because they're just getting five yards free every time they step in, just like that. And at some point, this, this cup may collapse to the point where the around throws become easier. I, now I think a, dis, a discussion about a double team. It's been called a couple of times during this point and respected by Hale, but looks like Hale is saying there are cutters within the space that we're, we're defending, so it's not a double team. Well, but that's not really the burden. You know, if you're guarding one of the cutters, that's one thing, but you, you can't just say, well, there is a cutter, therefore I'm allowed to be within 10 feet. And there's a little more pressure on the reset. But you see, they've just been in the middle the whole time. They're not hitting the swings at all. And then as soon as they try to go through the middle, they turn it over. And now fast break opportunity for Hale, who could tie the game up, although a travel is called. Oh, that's an awful travel call. Uh, let's be honest. That, that, you know, that's one of the worst travel calls in Ultimate. And you hate to see it because it pretty much only gets called when a team is frustrated like this after turning it over. And, you know, that's within three steps. That's simply not a travel. And you see it called all the time. There's The defense is also in significantly better position after this play, not only because the play is stopped, but just because where people are than they were before the travel was called. I see some defenders have gained a few yards. Yeah, it's a step up and get closer. Yeah, no, just not a good call. Constantino, though, still pushing the pace, although this one – Knocked away by Barry. I think this is a strip call. Uh, look borderline. I, I looked like Constantino certainly had a hand on it. I, it's just a question: did, did she catch the disc and have it knocked away? From my from my admittedly awful perspective on the opposite side of the field, looking at the cutter's back, I thought she looked like she caught it. But I, I would never try and claim on the field that I had even uh, maybe the fifteenth best perspective. <laughs> But this did go back and still has found its way over to Alley. Tight downfield defense again from I Country. High stall situation. Back line, and that one's out the back. Almost a dagger. But about great defense two again feet from I Country. Yes. And then at the last second, caught unaware. But Earhart just. Floats a scuba. I'm not sure what she was saw or was thinking with that throw. So now Hale with prime opportunity to tie this game up. Allie goes to that high release backhand and Emma brings it in. Hale adds a fourth straight score to make it seven to seven. Well, Ali Constantino clearly decided I am unguardable and I'm going to take over this game because she has just had her fingerprints on everything and again to the high release backhand and again to the assist well now it's on high country to make the adjustments yeah. <laughs> we kind of saw Nathan Hale spinning through the barrel until they found the bullet that worked now they've been sticking with this zone ever since and High Country is going to have to figure out how are we going to attack this. And we watched them conquer most of the field before going away from the strategy that had brought them there and turning the disc over. Well, what I don't understand is that we've seen some of their throwers throw 50-yard hucks, and they have had wide open deeps. Maybe they just feel like 
Constantino's going to be able to catch up, but from our vantage point, it doesn't look like she's close enough. If you got a huck with some pace on it, it would be able to get there and really just break open the zone. And and they've really they've almost done nothing to move the disc laterally or vertically. I mean, it's been all handler motion up through the middle of the cup, and you know you can throw. 200 passes and eventually score doing that but you can see that impatience starts to set in and they try to hit the dangerous pass through the middle of the cup and it gets knocked away if i were if i were in the coach's shoes i would want to see them adjust not necessarily do you have do you have to throw the deep throw but you got to start threatening it and that means both pump faking in the deep space but also getting that lateral motion that you're talking about so the disc is in the hands of someone who without a mark without a cup who around can them. threaten that space with a fake or a throw. Make Constantino respect it. Make the defense adjust. If you just throw the same throw 100 times, the defense doesn't really have to move, and that's never going to expose holes. Well, we have a ball game. 7-7, and cap ticking nearer as we have a very long, extended first half after it looked like it might be high country taking half 8-4. Hale has marched off three straight breaks, and we are all tied up. And again, this is the type of game we've seen High Country emerge from victorious all tournament long. And Earhart's finding some room now. And that, that throw is the one they need to make more because it gives them some options with no cup around the thrower. And part of the, part of the issue seems to be that really only Margaret Berry and Alyssa Earhart have proven confident enough to make some of the throws required in this zone. But right now they're getting the disc with enough frequency that they're able to push upfield. Earhart, back to Margaret, back to Earhart, back to Margaret. Finally, the motion is halted. Hannah Hangst. And there's there there are high country players who are just out of the play that have not really been able to get involved at all. But it is going to be half for high country. They score to make it 8-7 and take this game to halftime. <laughs> Carice. Grease Berry just ca casually scoring her seventh goal of the half. Wow. So That's unbelievable. A pr impressive goal-scoring performance from Grease Berry, but a very close game as we approach the 20-minute mark remaining until soft cap in the girls' final. High Country leads Nathan Hale 8-7. to seven. The teams are going to take a brief break, and we'll do the same. We'll be right back with you for the second half in just a little bit.
Welcome back to Ulti World's live coverage of the 2018 High School National Invite. Coming to you from Rockford, Illinois. Getting ready for the second half of the girls division final, although there's only about 15 minutes remaining in the soft cap, so. Gonna be on, uh, on uh, playing against the clock here, but High Country pulling to Nathan Hale with a narrow lead after a first half comeback from Hale. But remember, I mean, you would say playing against the clock, but remember, soft cap goes on, and then then there is no clock. You got to score to win, so it just is going to keep the game ending at a reasonable time as we watch High Country get a run through block up the line. Nice defense. Margaret Berry, her first block of the game, surprisingly. She's been a force on defense this weekend. Berry tried to check the disc in on the player line. Good try. Good try. And crossfield throw. Great effort, but not a completion. So Helmerium. Back in, up ahead to Alley. Cross field throw, looking for Emma, and her bid gets her fingertips on it, but can't get the goal. So, Earhart walking it to the goal line to be met by Savon Hurt. Vertical stack in front of her. No reset. So Earhart fights to throw it upfield. Now it's in the hands of Margaret Berry. Great reset defense from Hurt. One of the first times we've seen Earhart not been able to get the disc, but eventually she does. Open side for Margaret Berry. She and she and and Alyssa Earhart have to have 80% of the touches for high country in this game. And a deep shot there from Alyssa Hangst. And then to the end zone, Salem Hudson back to Margaret Berry for a high country hold. Or excuse me, high country break. That is indeed excuse a break. Me, up nine, seven. They, they take a two point lead. This throw does just enough to get there. And then it's jailbreak into the end zone. And that's, you know, for high country, they, they want to have their defense on the field. Uh, it's a totally different vibe for them. They, they were slogging there at the end of the first half with their O-line struggling to play zone offense. But when they get their defense out there, clearly getting pressure, and, of course, it's many of the same players, but it feels like there's a little bit of a different mentality when they get to start by playing on defense. And then, you know, they're most likely going to see a matchup defense rather than the, the zone in transition if they do get a turnover. Yeah, getting back on, on that defensive side, take try and take Hale out of what's been working for them. And also... Uh, you know, I'm sure High Country's glad to see some of the big throws on that point made by uh, some players that haven't quite gotten in the big throwing yet. It's mostly been, as we noted, touches for Earhart and Margaret Berry, but mixing it up a little bit. Alyssa Hanks, one of the two seniors on the team with Margaret Berry. So most of this High Country roster will be back for more next year. Near block, but Sylvie Corwin brings it in. Marie Scott gets it. Constantino. Nice job on the mark. Forced that throw backwards. Still these big flat marks from High country, giving up width. Nice seven cut from Emma. Freeze, freeze up the offense, and now Allie into the end zone. A little floaty, 
misread by the defense, but not by Marie Scott. She brings it in. It's 9-8. So both teams get away with a throw that maybe shouldn't have worked. Hale working back to the break side space. Ali Constantino's throw sneaks over the hands of the defense and in for the score. So under 10 minutes now. You see the Hale defense, Amanda Kostic, also getting some help from Margot Heffron. And the pair, <laughs> if I had to guess, drawing up another zone defense point. Both teams sending their top players out onto the line, point after point. They're probably a little bit more open of rotation for Hale, probably digging a little bit deeper, but for the most part, seeing a lot of Constantinos and this Barry Earhart combo. So back to the three-person cup. Earhart moving it around a little bit. As we see High Country attacking wider a little bit more than they had in some of these previous possessions. Barry through the middle, though, up to Carice Barry. And she looks off all the upfield options to go back to Alyssa Earhart. You've got a, so, such a sure pair of hands coming up behind you. It's understandable why you might be tempted to look for him again. And again, we see that deep well behind and almost completely ignored by Ali Constantino, the deep, deep. Checks back in, but High Country's not really threatening that space at all, so Constantino doesn't feel like she has to guard it. Yeah, it lets her keep more pressure in those mid-range throws. And she's essentially able to cover way more territory than she should be able to. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a cascading effect when your deep team can pinch up because it means that the second layer of your defense can also pinch up, and that lets your first layer be even more aggressive around the disc. Just compressing the field, which is what a zone wants to do, but a thrower like Alyssa Earhart can break it back open in some cases. Now through the middle, challenging catch, but ultimately completed by Kiel Ross. Definitely using more of the width of the field, though, than what we saw with the purely chisel-based attack. A notable change since halftime. And it, that means the throwers are moving all over the field. Earhart has touched it in all thirds of the field. She gets it back. Margaret around, about 15 yards out. Closing in on 10. It's still not, not a ton of pressure on the resets. They're, they're giving up the backwards throw, so Earhart and Barry are able to get back to the disc when they need to be. Around throw, Hannah McDill back to Barry, and now in the hands of Earhart again. So now a bit of a war of attrition in the red zone between these two teams. So you can execute better. <laughs> the defense trying to keep an eye on Barry in there. A wide throw to Hangst. Margaret Barry gives and goes. And for some reason doesn't hit the continued swing. And that's the one that you want to hit. And then strike cut, go get open. Tight window throw caught by Hengst. 
Now it's only a couple yards away, and Earhart just deftly sneaks that through the tiny window. Well, she's been lethal with that inside backhand, stepping around a mark and throwing back across the grain. And she does it again, this time for the assist. And just dishes back and then steps through, hits that breakside backhand. And high country, I mean, it may not be the prettiest zone offense. The biggest problem is that their downfield poppers aren't really comfortable hitting continuation throws and taking more difficult shots. And that means that every time they get through, they crack through that first layer, they don't, they don't keep it going. They have to end up going back and getting it reset with the handlers. And that means that it's very slow going. But they were very patient. They didn't take many dangerous shots that time. And eventually they found the end zone. Even, even their third handler is, doesn't seem particularly comfortable throwing downfield. So we'll see if it leads to another adjustment from Hale. Maybe if, if Ali Constantino is not really going to do anything in the deep space, maybe you go put her on in front of one of the resets and see if you can take one of Barry or Earhart away from the disc. Well, I think I was going to say the same thing. Like maybe we see uh, a four-person cup, something to add in a, some additional pressure in the backfield because I think that you'd see uh, a lot of struggle from this high country team if they were to find some ways to get pressure on those swings. Constantino over to Hurt to get things started for Hale's offensive point. And a drop from Hale. So they concede possession back to high country. So Earhart walks to pick up. And given that there's so much of the same personnel in the field, I'm sort of surprised that Hale doesn't go to the zone, especially with that much time to set up. Margaret Berry and Earhart back to work together. Now Hannah McDill comes under to get it, but there's a stoppage. So things will get corrected here. Back to the vertical stack for high country. Earhart's throw very wide, but Margaret has the speed to recover it. Loss of yardage, but maintain possession. Melissa Hanks wide open there. But her throw poached in a, another huge collision. Scary moments. Man, it's been a physical game. It looks like it's foul called, so this goes back. But there, a rare execution mistake between Margaret Berry and Earhart. So now Hale has another chance to hold. Giving up that break could have been fatal. Allie on the open side third. Back shoulder, backhand, looking for Emma. And it's perfectly calibrated. What a great throw. One of the best we've seen this game. Just excellent vision. She see Emma calls for it, and Ali delivers with a perfect backhand across the field. A little bit of that preternatural sister sister connection there. A little bit of the psychic psychic mumbo jumbo. Something like that. <laughs> and we're now. Although, I, I, that, on that point, I mean. Hale should hope not because there's a lot more sisters on the other side. <laughs> 21 to 
20 seconds now until the cap. So this game will be played to 12 or 13. They'll play this point. We'll add two to the higher score. So if Hale breaks and it's 10-10, it will be a game to 12. If High Country holds and it's 11 to 9, then it will be a game to 13. And there is no hard cap, so the game clock is out of play. So most of the same faces back out there for both sides, particularly high country, who's really seemed to settle into a seven or eight player rotation. Both teams seem to have found what they want to do and who they, who they want to do that with. Melissa Hanks back to Margaret. And here a bit more pressure on the resets, it seems like. A more aggressive cup from Hale. And, you know, I understand why they have Ali Constantino as the deep, deep in the zone. But they've basically never, High Country has never thrown it at her. Why not put her into a position in the zone where she can be more dangerous? If you had her in the cup, she might get a hand block. But instead, they're having her sit back. And again, I understand why they're doing that. But if you're never getting tested at all, why waste your best defender in a place on the field that's not being attacked? That's an excellent observation, Charlie. Get her near the play. She's a playmaker. Barry and Earhart look content to literally walk the disc up the field. Hannah Hanks now with the disc, and it seems like this is where Hale is trying to apply the pressure. When the disc is out of the hands of Barry or Earhart, can you keep them from getting the disc back? A lot of resources being dedicated to that task. I mean, at some point, really, your, your whole defense can start clamping down, right? Make them throw something over the top. And that swing comes. They have to have cuts to find a continuation to get past that first layer, and they're just really struggling to do that. Hannah Hanks finds something at a high stall count, and there's a throw wide, but Margaret Berry's athleticism and ability to make up for execution mistakes on the throw has saved a number of possessions. Great find. Now stepping into a power position and getting some upfield yardage out of it. That's Earhart every other and now Barry into the end zone the layout catch but they're saying that her elbows hit first and she is out of bounds and I'm sure this is going to be contentious. Let's take another look. She definitely, her feet were in bounds. The question is what was the first point of contact? This claim may have merit. So the swing comes and the shot into the end zone and it's so hard to tell. I mean, I, I think that I think that Hale may have a strong enough case here. It looks like they're going to send it back. I think that was probably a turnover. We'll take another look at it when we get a second. A an acceptable outcome given the circumstances and the fact that they don't have instant replay on the field. But there's a block in the cup, just indecisiveness from the thrower taken advantage of by Hale. Hard to overstate the value of this possession right now. Constantino sisters working it back and forth. Contested throw up to Hurt. And it seems like some of these high country players outside of, oh man, maybe to some degree everybody but Margaret Berry is starting to run a little bit out of gas.
So Alley up ahead to Hurt. Alley going to get it right back. Alley towards the end zone. It's hanging. A jump ball for Hurt. But pulled down out of the air by Patton. Hale breaks. Tie ball game. Game to 12. So put your seatbelts on if they're not already. Because we're going to have an exciting finish. High Country has to make the long 70-yard walk and put their O-line out there again, knowing they're going to see that zone again. And they have really struggled since Hale found that defense. I mean, have maybe one time this game in this zone, have Margaret Berry or Alyssa Earhart turned it over against the zone? I think in almost every instance, it has been one of their teammates who's made that critical mistake. Ali Constantino's throw, again, just putting it out into open space and trusting that her teammates are going to go and get it. Works out again. And how big is that call, the no goal call, sending it back? The throw up to Hudson. Well, let's look at it again while we have a chance. And I I think maybe it was a goal. I, I, you reverse depends, course, huh? It depends on when she catches the disc. Let's watch it one more time and really see if we can slow it down and see when does she catch the disc there and her toes are on the ground. I think that should have been a high country score. Based on that replay, I agree with you. High country goal, and they're unable to, to finish the next possession. And, and you can understand why. I, obviously, we have the benefit to go almost Absolutely. frame by frame to see when she catch, claps that disc and to see that her toes are still on the ground. But in real time, had I been on the field, I would have called it out of bounds if I was Nathan Hale. Yeah, I, I don't blame anybody in that situation, and that's why I said that sending it back is an, a very reasonable outcome given the amount of information that the players had to make the decision. What a game. So I think we have another uh, kind of de facto timeout right now as teams taking their time on the line. Uh, considering the amount of points played for the top end players on both sides, uh, I imagine there's some fatigue setting in, but you know, championships are made of being able to survive these moments. Our coverage today presented by Universe Point Cleats. Check them out at universepoint.com and get yourself a pair of ultimate specific cleats built from the ground up. All right. All fans know it is a game to 12. It is soft tap, not hard tap. So we're going to 12, people. So the pull goes up from Alley. And we're just a couple points away from deciding a champion, and both teams have just about equal claim to that title as we speak. Margaret Perry and Alyssa Earhart trying to drive this offense forward. And Earhart's throw is she knocked away. I mean, she just couldn't line forced, that up right. Forced into a difficult situation in the high stall. And she didn't have the option she wanted, so she had to just try to fire one out into space and have way too much pace on it. And now it's a short field for Hale. Uh, nobody was moving, though. It's hard to hit a target that stands still when you're trying to throw to space sometimes. And now into the end zone for Hurt. Hale breaks. They take their first lead. Wow. The zone getting Hale back into this game. 
and now putting them ahead. And they're one point away from a victory here at the second annual high school national invite. High Country reeling. Again, Ali Constantino just so effective on offense. Steps up and makes another great throw. Eight assists for Ali Constantino. She has been doing some heavy lifting for Hale and now has her team just one goal away from claiming the high school national invite championship. And I, I, I'm not sure what the adjustment level that High Country has available to them is at this point. They look fatigued, but also their throwing skill is just so concentrated into a couple of players. And this zone has taken away their ability to turn to those other players and use their speed, which is something they have plenty of. So by turning this into a game about throwing, you're making it really feel like a game of five on two. Well, I know we talked about it already, but not one time in this whole sequence of points where they've seen the zone have they attacked the deep space and challenged Constantino to make a play when she's 35 yards away from the cutter. So can we see high country force double game point? They need a hold. Air hard to bury. A phrase I'm probably going to be saying a lot. Air hard directing traffic, but upfield throw is really just not an option. No one is open. Now using the width a little bit. Handlers kind of clogging around each other, so. Not giving enough space. Another adjustment you could potentially use here is adding a fourth handler. I mean, anything to get your players involved. So they, I mean, they have three players who are essentially hanging out in the areas where the defense is standing. And when they're getting swings or break throws, they're not finding the next cut. Well, that wide throw to Alyssa Hanks. And if, I, just to be clear, you can't see this on the camera, but there is a... Cutter standing in the end zone. 40 yards. At least 35, 40 yards away from the deep deep. And now, all you have to do is throw it as hard as you can, and you're probably going to get a complete. There is, there is a point, I will say, where your cutter is just not an option. Your cutter is basically walked off the field if they're so deep that you can't throw it to them. Constantino is, is making a bet that the throw is just not going to be good enough to get there before she does. Understandably. And there's a wide throw. To open things up. Those are the opportunities the high country can kind of push the pace and maybe get in a power position where they can throw further. Earhart across the field. High country starting to get some, some width going here. Earhart able to make that backhand through the cup that she's used so effectively today. Now into the middle for Alyssa. Back to Earhart, high country just a few yards away from tying it up. Barry. Margaret to Earhart. Earhart fires one through, has a target. Carice Barry ties it up. This is double championship point. Double season point, Keith. How many times have we been here before? And the grittiest hold of the game goes to high country. And it's just Earhart making enough good throws to get them into the end zone. That forehand's so crisp. And it's 11-11, double game point. All right, Charlie, let me reach uh, into the old Rolodex of sports cliches. I mean, this is one of those points that feels like it's about who wants it more. Uh, we Both teams have put their cards on the table strategically. I don't, think, I don't think Hale has an adjustment they've had in the back pocket for double game point with the championship on the line. Maybe they do. Maybe they've outsmarted me and, and them. But uh, at this point, both teams have shown, shown what they're going to show, and it's about having the willpower and the energy to execute. I, and and th it's been that kind of game. It's been a grinding game. And 
High Country, you know, for all of the breaks that they've given up as they lost that lead. Remember, it looked like they were going to take half 8-4. They gave up three in a row, ended up taking half 8-7. They go up 9-7, but Hale pushes back, goes ahead 11-10. And now here we are at 11-11. And High Country, though, gets to start this point on defense. And we've seen all game. Mentality's been different. Nathan Hale, in these situations, has typically gone to a matchup defense on a turnover instead of going to the zone. Maybe they'll do something different this time, but you said it, Keith. We, we know the personnel that are going to be out there. They've just played at least 10 points in a row against one another, essentially the top seven for both teams. And so this is just, it's go time. Who's going to make a play? The Stars, Earhart and Barry for High Country. The Constantino sisters for Hale. Both have made enormous plays in this game. And it's all going to come down to this. High School National Invite title on the line. Mostly the faces you would expect on the line for each side. And these are trying moments as a coach as well. I mean, you feel that pressure swelling up. You want to make sure you put your players in the best position to succeed, but this is one of those moments where you feel like you don't have as much control as you'd like. As... Earhart sends the pull, and we are underway at what will be the final point in the girls' division of the high school national invite. One way or another, Hurt takes off, gets separation. Ali Constantino puts it up for her. She's got it about five yards out. Looking for something. Constantino spins, gets open. Breakside throw to her sister. The Constantinos connect. And Nathan Hale are your second annual high school national invite champions. Nathan Hale, Charlie, coming back from a 7-4 deficit to win the game, 12-11. What a moment. Constantino sisters connect for the game's final point, and Hale wins it. Uh, it, it. Odd how different that point was from so much of the game, this grinding, hard-fought, physical, slow-paced game, and we see an efficient hold in which one throw does most of the damage to finish it off, but a hard-earned championship for Nathan Hale They will take the hardware back home to Seattle. And we are going to have a brief award ceremony coming up now for the girls division. And then following that, we will have the boys final. Coming to you live. It will be Nathan Hale looking to make it a sweep going up against Grady out of Georgia. So stay with us as we get prepared for the trophy presentation. Teams taking a spirit circle. The boys final is scheduled for 1.30 central time. That's in about 10 minutes. Uh, 
very likely that game will start later than that. I would anticipate more like 145, but we will see. I know that there's going to be some urgency to get things moving, considering the weather. There is some rain falling right now. Still no, currently no thunderstorms in the area. And this rain is supposed to end in about 10 minutes, and then we've got some clear skies for, uh, for the next hour or two. So we will keep an eye on the weather and what's going on with the boys final. Right now we are awaiting the end of the spirit circle, at which point the trophy will be awarded to Nathan Hale. Keith, that was quite a game. And it had something for everyone. You know, you have the incredible individual performances. You have the strategic back and forth and the tinkering that Nathan Hale had to do to find something that would slow down that high country offense. I mean, there were, may have been more breaks in that game than offensive holds. Uh, you would have to go back and take a look. But lots of breaks from both teams. It and was close. I think there were nine breaks in the 23 points or something like that. There you go. So a hard-fought national invite title. And it, it wouldn't surprise me if in the upcoming boys' final we have a game uh, uh, that is similar, similarly hotly contested, although I think that teams from the boys' final are, are a bit more stylistically in tune with one another. Yeah, both teams athletic. Both teams like to shoot it deep to their athletes and it's going to be a test I think especially for Nathan Hale who hasn't come up a team with the athleticism to match them yet and this Grady team could well do that and Aiden Downey is the player to watch from this Grady team and he had an unbelievable semifinal as they dismantled Center Grove and now they will be looking for a national invite title. <laughs> Downey, Downey came up to me during pool play this weekend after listening to Deep Look where he made our picks. And he goes, hey, I like your podcast, but we have to prove you wrong. <laughs> I gave him a high five, told him good luck. But uh, he, he and this Grady team won it, and Downey is a tremendous talent and very much looking forward to him and Getting to see him try and take down the Nathan Hale team that has been mostly unfazed at this tournament. See Nick Lindeke, tournament director in the blue jacket, walking over for the trophy presentation. Now, shout out to that guy. Nick has been truly just grinding this weekend. It takes a lot of effort to make a tournament like this happen, and Nick has been on the front lines. And let's listen in with our new Shabaharian, the head of cut camps and the coach of Nequa Valley Boys. Here's Java. <laughs> It was for finals just like this, where we have a team from North Carolina, a team from Seattle, um, coming from different parts of the country, coming together, playing this great, amazing game of ultimate with such great spirit, and to see a game come down to Universe Point, um, that's, that's why we do this. That's why we're here. Um, I want to go ahead and give a, a hand to Ulti World for all the big ones that have done the hand, please. Camp. I know you get a ton of emails from me to coaches have 
the mic for getting tired of reading, uh, receiving emails from me, but uh, we did a great job there too. So thank you to all the teams that are coming, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get going with the award. Uh, first up, uh, in second place, coming from North Carolina, we have High Country Homeschooler, Lucinda Andrews. <laughs> High Country receiving a wooden disc as a second place prize for their efforts. A great tournament for them and a great season. The North Carolina State Champions finishing second here at the High School National Invite. So there, the little photo opportunity. Nathan Hale wins the Spirit Award and the championship. The clean sweep, that is a phenomenal achievement. As they get all of their gear, they get the wooden plaque to take home, the cup, which is awarded, the trophy, but that, that one is uh, comes back to the national invite every year. You can already see that there's some a single additional plaque on there from last year's champion HB Woodlawn they won the title and so now Nathan Hale will get their names engraved on it and they are the champions <laughs> they are playing catch with the wooden disc. And they have yet to turn it, so. And now they're getting their championship hats. Oh, and we are getting set for the boys' final. So that's going to conclude our broadcast here of the girls' final. Maybe one more picture coming up with the championship hats. And the boys' finals coming up next. So join us. We're going to be closing off this broadcast, but the boys' final will be in on our YouTube channel as well as on ultiworld.com slash live. Our coverage today presented by Universe Point Cleats. Check them out at universepoint.com. That's going to do it. Nathan Hale wins it 12-11 over high country homeschoolers on double championship point. For Keith Rayner, I'm Charlie Eisenhood signing off from this girls' broadcast. We'll be back in probably two minutes for the boys' final. <laughs>